Hey everyone, my name is Blaine and today I'm going to help you get started with one of my favorite tools ever, Dehancer for DaVinci Resolve. We can start by going to dehancer.com and if we hit video on the top, we can see everything that they offer. There's a couple standalones like Dehancer Lite, Grain, Bloom, and a couple others, but today we are going to look at Pro. This is the most fully featured option that they have and has everything in it that you need to create a stunning film look on your footage. I have DaVinci Resolve selected here, so I'm going to hit download and get free trial. DaVinci Resolve 17 and later. I am on Big Sur or later, and we're going to go with Dehancer Pro 7.1.3. If you have already purchased it, you can hit download, or we can hit get free trial and then put the license in later. And here you can click get free trial, and I'm going to enter my email and hit send. So then we will have a zip file that we can open up and the installer. This is pretty self-explanatory. You can go through here, install Dehancer. I'm not gonna do it because I already have it on my computer. So I have a project set up here with a couple different clips from a couple different cameras. And I'm gonna show you how to get started with Dehancer in a variety of different pipelines, standard DaVinci Y RGB, DaVinci Y Gamut, and Asus. So to start, we will go to the effects button here and type Dehancer and drag on Dehancer Pro 7.1.3. If this is your first time opening it and you've already purchased it, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom and hit license info. A box will come up where you can paste the key that was emailed to you and then you're activated. We can also hit check profiles to make sure that everything is up to date here. Okay, so everything's done here. I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, so now that everything's set up, we'll take a look at a couple different pipelines. As mentioned, standard DaVinci YRGB, DaVinci Y Gamut, and Asus. First, we'll look at standard DaVinci YRGB. So we'll go to our settings down here, go to color management, and in color science, we have the default here, DaVinci YRGB. I have set the timeline color space to Rec 709A because I'm on a Mac, and output color space to same as timeline. And then we will click save. Also, if you're on a Mac, you can go to DaVinci Resolve, preferences, general and select use Mac display color profiles for viewers. This way what you see in Resolve will match what you render out of Resolve. We'll hit save here. Okay, so now that we're all set up, we can look at the options in Dehancer. There are a variety of different elements in here to get familiar with. This clip was shot on a red Komodo, so we can start at the top with our source and I'm gonna select choose camera and I'm gonna select red and I will select Komodo 6K. Okay, so now let's take a look a little bit further and dial in the beginning stages of our look. This is a very bright clip, so in this case, if we were shooting on film and it's daylight, we might shoot on Kodak 250D or 50D. Let's see what 50D looks like. 50D looks pretty good. And then the other thing I do kind of right away is to select our print. So I'll scroll down to print and select 2383 which is standard print that looks really good. And then sometimes I will go back up to our stock and see, let's just see what 250D looks like. 250D does look cool, but let's just keep it at 50D. So the combination of our film stock and our print gives us this. So now we have a good base, but this image is pretty bright right off of the camera, so I wanna tune it and make it look good. The first thing I wanna do is bring down the exposure. We have two areas where we can adjust our exposure and other elements of the image. In our input, these controls are more of technical adjustments and don't behave the same way as our tools within print and within color head. Print and color head match more of what you would experience with actual film, and as mentioned, these are more technical. So let's just take a little bit of a look here to see just dealing with exposure, how the two differ. I'm gonna bring this down to where I think it looks good and maybe we can view our scopes. And we're just looking at exposure here. And I think somewhere around here is good. It's a really bright day, so I want it to remain bright. As I'm looking in here right now, 
I also know that I'm gonna to wanna to deal with saturation, which we'll get into after we look at the exposure. I'm going to make a new version here and reset this exposure. This was kind of our technical exposure adjustment and then go into our print and adjust our print exposure here to a point that looks good. And we can go back to this exposure. I'm gonna grab a still, Command Shift G, go to our new version, and let's just get the exposure somewhat similar. And we can see the two different versions here. So this is with our technical exposure within the source, and this is within the print, which is making it behave more like film. It seems richer. I think for this, I will stick with using exposure in the print. So now let's look at saturation. To dial in our saturation, I'm going to go into the film developer and go to color boost, bring up the color boost a little. We can see what this color boost looks like on and off. That is giving us more of what I want. This is looking nice. Color boost is really good for images that have weak color and mimics more so the richness of film. Just a couple more things that we'll take a look at in Dehancer and then we'll move on to another pipeline. And then in an additional tutorial, we'll get deeper into all of these elements. So let's start out in our input and move around our temperature a little bit. Okay, let's say we want it warmer. So we'll keep it maybe right here. And I'm gonna make a new version, reset this, and go to our target white in the print. And then I'll make one more version where we turn off the target white. So this is where we were before. This is target white in the print, which warms it up in a slightly different way than if we were to warm it up in the input. Again, the print and the color head respond more how film actually responds. We can take a quick look in the color head and see what these are doing. I will reset these. We can change our shadow tone, change our highlight tone. Let's say we want our highlights just a touch warmer. This is making them just a tiny bit warmer. So we have a warm image that doesn't look like it's just a global overall like color temperature adjustment on top of it and it's looking good. Also film compression will bring down our highlights. We can see in the scopes and out here what film compression is doing. Film has a ton of range in the highlights so to be able to have the film compression in Dehancer is really great because it really does look more like how actual film would have captured this shot. I'll leave it off for now though. We can also adjust our grain as we wish. There's a ton of different options in here and then you can adjust how much you want. Same thing with halation, super customizable and bloom. You can see things kind of blooming around here and here. And there's a lot of options here that are inherent to film, like film damage, film breathe, gate weave. Film breathe is when like the colors kind of change a little bit. Gate weave is when the film is actually moving a little bit. The image is actually moving a little bit. And overscan, so we can see the film gate. We can see the perfs, vignette, and so on. So a lot of different options in here. So this is looking good, but I think the last thing I'm gonna do, just because this is a really high dynamic range scene, is to just bring down our tonal contrast a little bit in our print. And then I'm gonna bring down our exposure a little bit overall. And this is looking pretty good. Okay, we will go to another clip. This was shot on the Amira similar to before, but we will select our camera and select Aerie, Alexa Mini, and Log C. All Alexas besides the Alexa 35 have the same color and gamma, so that is Log C. If this was shot on an Alexa 35, you could select Alexa 35 and it's Log C4. So I will do what I usually do and go down to the print. I usually start with the print and go to 2383, and then I will move back up to our profile. 250D is looking good. Again, this is daylight, seems like natural light, so I wanna stay in a daylight film, and we're keeping it in the Kodak family today. Let's see what 50D looks like. 50D looks pretty good. We did 50D on the last one, so let's do 250D here. I will go to the print and bring down our exposure, and because this is a very bright clip right off of the camera, I might go to our technical exposure and bring it down there first to just kind of correct what was a bright clip that was captured. And this is looking good. Another thing that I wanna do is just bring up our black point a little bit 
and this is a perfect clip where the color boost might come into play. So I will go to our film developer, hit enable, and increase the color boost. Now we're starting to look good. And let's say I want a little less grain on here. I'll go to our grain and let's say 35 millimeter 50, which will be less grain. The lower the ISO, the less the grain or the more fine the grain. I just want to bring it down even a little more and we can see without it and with it. And then it's still looking a little bright to me. So I'll go back to our print and just lower our print exposure a little bit, maybe lower our contrast just a tiny bit. And there we go. That was fast. We can also adjust our halation. So I'm going to zoom in here and go down and turn on halation. You can see what's happening on the nose here. That looks pretty good. Slight glow. I love it. We can also adjust our quality down here from normal to high. So usually when I'm working, I will set the quality to normal. And then before I render, I will set the quality to high. This is why it could help to put Dehancer on the timeline so that when you make an adjustment, it's adjusting everything in your project or everything in your timeline rather than having to go clip by clip. If you have different scenes where you want different film stocks and different looks, you could put your scenes into different groups. So for example, if you had a film where half of it took place low light interior and the other half of it took place daytime exterior and you wanted a 50D or a 250D look and then a 500T look, you could put all your exteriors into one group all your interiors into one group, and then you have two different film stocks that affect everything in that scene. You can also do it by camera. So if you have different cameras in a project, you could group the different cameras and then have a dehancer profile for each camera. That way, if you wanna make a change, you don't need to go clip by clip. So for example, you could add these two to a new group and let's say studio, and then in your group post clip, because Maybe you don't want to put Dehancer on the timeline because you don't want it to affect every clip the same way that's in this timeline. We'll go to group post clip and then you're just making moves that are on the clips in the studio group. Okay, let's say that your camera is not on the list. Most cameras are, but if yours is not, we can take a look at how to tackle that as well. Let's pretend that this is a clip that's not on the list and let's say that it was shot in Rec 709. So to mimic that, I'm going to just transform the airy color to Rec 709. And after that, I am going to add Dehancer and I'm gonna keep our source as Rec 709. Additionally, you can transform your footage if it's not on the list to a different camera through a color space transform and then add Dehancer to that. Okay, so now we can look at another pipeline, ACES. So we have another clip here and we will change our project to an ACES pipeline. So here we have ACES CCT, we'll go to ACES 1.3 no input transform, apply ACES reference gamut compress is checked. The output transform will be Rec 709. We will use ACES CC AP1 here, and we will use color space aware grading tools. We will set this to gamma and we will hit save. If resolve doesn't recognize the clip, like it's not recognizing it right now. It will recognize some clips. It will recognize raw clips that have metadata in it that will tell Resolve which camera it is and then transform it to Rec. 709 automatically. We'll right click and go to ACES input transform, ARI, log C, and we are now transformed to 709. So we have a normalized image here with no corrections made yet and we can add Dehancer. And in our source, we will select ACES CCT AP1. Same as before, I will go through this one quickly. I'm going to go to outside, very bright. So I'm going to select 50D, still keeping it in the Kodak family. Go down to our print, 2383. And I definitely know I'm going to want color boost on here. So let's go to our film developer, enable and boost that color. That's looking really nice. And I want to bring up our exposure maybe around here. And then I wanna go back to the color boost and just bring it down a little bit. Somewhere around here looks good. So from standard 709 to an amazing look in just seconds. And that is one of the reasons I really love Dehancer. And still there's so much more that you can do in here. Now let's take a look at one thing that we haven't looked at yet, color density. This has a lot of colors in it, the yellow and the red, and I want them to be more dense. So let's bump that up a little bit. And I want to warm up the whole image overall. And let's just look at the contrast. Maybe there is good. It's looking very nice. I like the color density. This is with no color density, 
and this is with color density. That is a, also a major part of the film look and it's great that it's included here within the print tools. So that is looking good to me and this is an example of how to do this in ASUS. So now let's take a look at another color pipeline, DaVinci Wide Gamut. We have another clip that we can look at for this and I'm gonna go into our settings and we will go into our color science and select DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. We will uncheck this and go to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate and we will keep the rest as is. Rec 709 Scene and Rec 709A, that selection needs to be made based on your computer, your monitoring, what you're outputting to, and I will leave that up to you, but we will leave this as Rec 709 Scene for now, and I will hit save. So this is what we will get, no adjustments here. So when you get this, we will go and do the same thing we did before, right click on the clip, input color space, airy, log C. So now we have a normalized image in the DaVinci Wide Gamut pipeline, similar to what we did in ASUS. So we will go to Dehancer, drop this on the node and select DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. As you should know by now, I will go to our profile. We are interior, so I'm gonna go with 500T and that's looking good. And then I'm gonna go down to our profile and select our 2383. You don't have to select a print, but I like it. This is looking really great right away, but there's a couple things I wanna do. And now that we've put the print on, I like to just check up here to make sure. I wanna see what 200T looks like. Ooh, this is a tough one. Maybe we'll stick with 200T. I'm gonna look at our waveform. I think this is just a little bit dark, so I'm gonna go into our technical exposure and just bring it up a tiny bit just a tiny bit, and then I might bring it up more in our print exposure. Adjust our contrast slightly. I want more contrast, so I'll bring up our exposure. And then I will also bring up our color density and our color boost. It's so amazing how quickly we can go from the standard normalization Rec. 709 to this look. So this is an example with the DaVinci Wide Gamut pipeline, and it is looking great. Okay, so one other thing that we can do, because I know a lot of people do this, is to do a node-based DaVinci Wide Gamut. So I'm gonna go back and just go to my default settings, and I'm gonna go back to 709A here. It's just how I operate on this computer with my outputs, and it also changed my default size, so I'll go back to where we were. Pro tip, if you set anything in here and want to not have to set it every time you open the project, you can hit this and save current settings as a preset or save current settings as default so that you don't need to worry about it. So we will use a color space transform here and go from Airy to DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And then we will use another color space. I just copied this and pasted it here. And then I'll swap these and go to Rec. 709. So we have a normalized image that we can work in between. And I'll add a node before and add Dehancer. And here I will select DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate and quickly get back to where we were. 200T, 2383 a little more contrast, some color density, and some color boost. And we are looking great again in a node-based workflow. So you can work in Dehancer in a variety of different color pipelines and get your desired results, get really good looking images very quickly. They respond and feel like how film captures images and I love it. If you need any more information, refer to the quick guide and check the next tutorial for an even deeper look at all of the different settings within Dehancer.